Nigerian smallholder farmers, mostly poor, but produce some 90% of the country's food on unirrigated plots solely dependent on rainfall. Their crops are vulnerable to ever more extreme or sudden twists in weather conditions. Farmers report the late onset of rains and dry spells, rises in temperatures, heavy downpours and other unseasonable weather events. Nigeria is ranked as the 53rd most vulnerable country and the sixth least ready country in the world to adapt to climate change in the 2021 Notre Dame Global Adaptation Index. People are forced to do seasonal farming because we do not have irrigation infrastructure. Yet this is also a country where any times it's the rainy season, we have unexplainable flooding. So it means that nature is blessing us with these resources, but because we are profligate, we don't know how to manage it, we are losing things. Right now, the yield of one of the main crops planted in the country, tomato, is said to be lowered by 25% per hectare because of climate change, threatening livelihoods of about 200,000 farmers and an entire supply chain of enterprises they serve. It is projected to cost between 6 to 30 percent of Nigeria's GDP by 2050, translating to between 100 and 460 billion dollars in losses. When it comes to climate change, Farmer Samson is one of many Nigerians working to change the trend to secure the country's food production. Without soil, it's growing tomatoes and other vegetables all year round, beating the weather challenges. With soilless farming, you are not contributing. It actually has almost zero carbon footprint compared to traditional farming methods. So, for example, they'll say, okay, for you to do things that does not affect climate, no tilling, we are not tilling the soil. We are not doing runoff from chemicals. So then all of these cocoa peat, rice hull that we are using naturally would have been a waste somewhere, contributing more to climate change. But right now, we are using them on the farm, so we are turning waste to wealth. So if anything, we are mitigating against factors that would have even made climate change worse. Samson knows his method as of now may not grow all crops, but he says it will help many get their necessary dietary requirements. Anywhere a uh, civilization gets to agriculture is pushed out. So this allows us to have beautiful farms that can work in mega cities, which is what we are trying to do. Now, in taking these farms to the mega cities, we are also able to grow things like our veggies closer to those who need it so that those in soil can focus on plants that would take longer time and not worry about these short-term plants. In its National Adaptation Plan framework, the government identifies the ecosystem-based adaptation approach to combat food insecurity, climate change and ecosystem degradation in the country. One of the basic areas in terms of uh, uh, ecosystem-based adaptation uh, Reference to agriculture is agroforestry, making sure that when you plant, you just don't go on monoculture. Monoculture system have destroyed, that will destroy uh, the forest because we want to plant. Monoculture brings, you know, some insects will just spring up because they are used as a plant. But if you use a, a, a kind of different mixed cropping, one will not be vulnerable to the other one. The vulnerability of one insect will not accommodate in another plant. The latest report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change warns that yields of rice, maize and wheat are projected to fall by 10 to 25 percent per degree warming. But the IPCC also says transforming farming and livestock production can actually reduce emissions and slow down the collapse of the food system. Ayola Kasim, Channels Television News.